Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here today. As you can see, it is Youth Led Sunday, and we are so excited to share some of our favorite music with you. Um, we have some awesome bakery treats that are formed afterwards, also prepared by the youth. Um, so thank you so much for being here and um, sharing in this joyful worship. Um, I'm just going to teach a song quickly because a lot of this music is new. It's pretty easy to catch on. All the words are in the bulletin, but the, the tune you're going to have to pick out. Um, so this is called The Rock. It is the song of praise. I'm going to teach it to you quick right now. So how this song goes is I sing a line, and kind of halfway through the line, you're going to start singing that line, okay? So it goes like this. Let's try that all together. I will 
Almighty God, who truly to know is everlasting life, grant us so perfectly to know your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the way, the truth, and the life, that we may steadfastly follow his steps in the way that leads to eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed to the heaven and saw the glory of God in Jesus, standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, and with a loud shout, all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the, witness, the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While, this, while they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a Lord, loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In you, O oh God, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. And make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe, for you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, meet me and guide me. Take me out of the net that they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands I command my spirit. For you have redeemed me for our truth. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Make your face to shine upon your servant. May your loving kindness save me. A reading from the first letter of Peter. The newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, come to him, a living stone. They're rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stone, let yourself be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am lying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and, chosen and precious. And whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. For those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they are destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you are not a people, but now you are God's people. And once you have not once you have not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Also in me, in my father's house there are many dwelling places. 
if it were not so, would I have told you that I go and prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How do we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and still you do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these. Because I am going to the Father, I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Jesus in his death, 
and honor his life. As a Christian, we know that if we continue to live the way Jesus did by showing love and kindness, we will be able to go to heaven. But there are also those things that we can't really know until it happens. We can be sure that through communion at one heart, people we love will live on eternally. While we read through the text for today, verse 15 says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. Just last week, I was at St. Mark's Cathedral to be confirmed. The bishop's sermon was on this verse. He made it very clear that the base step to following Jesus is trying your best to love others. The bishop even said the only commandment in John is the commandment of loving one another and loving your neighbor. So I decided to fact check him. Employ John 13, 34, 35. I give you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you have loved one another. John 15, 12, 13. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. It even stays true, not through the Gospel of John, but even through the letters of John. 1 John 4, 21. And this commandment we have from him, that the one who loves God should love his brother also. 2 John 1, 5. And says, let us love one another. And this is love that we walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment just as you have heard it from the beginning. You must walk in. It is obvious as people who love Jesus, we must try our very hardest to live that way of love. That must be Jesus' way living on, just as my great grandma lives on through my family and our love for music. Amen. 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 We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And the kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and life for the world to come. This morning we are honoring our high school graduate. This year we have one, and that is Owen. I ask Owen to come forward, and those his parents, and, um, and Jeff Stroman. I want you to come forward if you would. Um, so um, this is a, a ritual that Anna Brock, our children and youth minister, brought to us with her ministry here, and um, Anna will lead us in this part of our worship. Oh, these past school years have brought challenges unknown to many generations before you. But through it all, you are not alone. In holy baptism, you are marked as Christ's own forever. You place this cross in your hands as a sign of the depth and breadth of God's love for you. Through baptism, you are clothed and covered in Christ. You place this blanket around your shoulders as a sign that you are wrapped in God's love. Parents, please wrap your student in the love of God represented by this blanket given from St. David's prayer to all ministry. And repeat and say this blessing. 
You were given to me to love the world, and you don't belong to me alone. You belong to Christ, and you have been baptized. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Amen. And now, Owen, you wrap your parents. And go. <laughs> <laughs> And you say this blessing. You were given to me to love, and you don't belong to me alone. You belong to Christ in whom you have been baptized. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Amen. And I invite the congregation to raise your arm in a sign of blessing. The Lord Jesus Christ, in the waters of baptism, you called Owen by name and lavished on him unconditional love. At the communion table, will you feed and forgive him so that he may love with the same love we have given him? Owen, abide in God's love and go out with good courage to follow Jesus' way of abiding love. Through the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. <laughs>
for all who have served us with us in our daily lives, our families, our friends, our neighbors, our colleagues, our acquaintances, and for the stranger and the isolated and oppressed.
walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation and the calling of Israel to be your people. In your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. We offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, Presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine, we pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with David and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. <laughs>
Stephen Pam. Stephen Pam are taking communion today to George Willard. In the name of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body, because we share the one bread and the one cup.
one thing that didn't happen was we didn't give you your books of common prayer. It's our custom here when people are confirmed that we, the bishop signs, we sign, and to give you a book of common prayer and then kind of the official confirmation documents. So congratulations on your confirmation, and it is wonderful to have you as part of this community. So maybe more applause for this. <laughs> So I'd like to explain that it's really pretty easy because most of the cooking is done by Central Kitchen and all you need to do is something like cut up apples, make a salad, that sort of thing. And it's at um, St. Gabriel's Church in Hopkins, which is 12th in Maine. The prep is 3 to 5 and the serving is 4.30 to 6.30. That's very simple. Um, you start filling all of these trays with food and so on. So we need one more person for serving and two to three people to sign up to do the prep. There's a sign up sheet downstairs by the window. Thank you. If you have questions, see you. I'm going to suggest, Susan, that you stand right by the font in the back and people can come talk to you as well, if that works for you yeah. after the service. <laughs> right. Hi, I'm Nan Drake, and I'm going to invite you all to take a hike. <laughs> We're going on the 14th and the 28th. Um, take a, a loop around the neighborhood to check out a couple things. First of all, what's growing, and when the lawns have greened up, and what's happening next door at Mills Church. So we can all go over and then kind of scope out the property and see exactly what we're talking about. If it's a parking lot, if it's a house, if it's a pot, you know, whatever it is. And the plan is to end up at the Dairy Queen. So <laughs> bring your walking shoes, your sunscreen, and Stay um, after church, no form on the 14th. Stay after and we'll all go together. It'll be fun. Yeah. Uh, good morning, Chris Sarda. If you're not into hiking with that, maybe you can't hike on Sunday, but you can come on Saturday. I'm calling all bikers. 
Uh, the annual MS bike ride is coming up this Saturday, the 13th, and there's an official event in St. Paul, but we kind of done our own event that starts at my place of work called Westwood. Uh, we'll go from 9 to about 11. It's a 16 mile round trip. It's really easy. Harrison's going to do it with me this year. We'll see if we can get 16 miles out of him. But, uh, <laughs> look, look at the uh, email that comes out. There's a link also for you to sign up, or you can just talk to me. Um, you can do it officially. There's a place to donate, a link to donate as well. Um, it should be a nice day, and we'll probably have some nice weather. So, if you're interested, let me know. Oh, and donuts will be provided afterwards, too. Hi, I hope the Niles. Two quick announcements, I promise. Um, this Tuesday night at 7 p.m. in the Undercroft, we have Ricky Camille coming from Beacon to talk to us about the unhoused population and how they uh, work to house them, and um, also an update about the MISTA 44 project that we all um, help fundraise for. And uh, they broke ground on that, so it's really exciting. It'll be fun to learn about. Um, so that's Tuesday. Uh, at seven, and then on Friday, the women are having a happy hour at my house. <laughs> um, and you can look up my address or email me. Um, it's at five, and we'll just have drinks, bring something to snack on if you feel like it. We're just gonna hang out. Thanks. All right, I'm Anna, I'm your children and youth minister. Um, I want you to take a look at the last page in your bulletin. There's inserts. Since we have all the youth up here singing some favorite songs for camp, I wanted to um, just let you know that camp is coming up. Uh, there's youth camp and there's also family camp. And family camp is for all ages. Um, it is focused around being, um, you know, family friendly to families with young children. Um, so that's the focus. But we also invite folks who are there to um, be there intergenerationally. So if you have any questions about family camp, please let me know. And same with youth camp, if you have any questions. Um, if you know a young person at St. David's or not at St. David's, they are welcome to join us for camp. It's gonna be a really good time. Um, so please check it out, camp. It's the best time ever. Um, in fact, you might have noticed kind of a funny little verse in the communion hymn um, that didn't quite seem to fit the rest of the verses. If anybody can find it. Um, that's a little inside joke from last year's camp. And so um, <laughs> maybe ask a youth who was, on, who was at camp last year, or Jeff, or Eric, or myself, about that story. Um, but there's so many fun times to be had at camp and so many fun stories to share from camp. Um, so please sign up this summer. Um, and then I want to invite you downstairs for coffee hour. Um, we have coffee hour is going to be hosted. Um, by a couple of our youth, and they baked some awesome treats, and I'm not gonna make you stand up, but can you just like wave your hand real quick? Awesome. We've Bella and Georgie and Allie helping out on coffee hour, so thank you so much to them. And we've had more work behind the scenes. We also have a community forum prepared for you. So um, Sonia did a lot of work on that, so um, come join us for that. It's going to be kind of an educational and also interactive presentation, kind of just learning some terms and keywords about the, our LGBTQ plus siblings in Christ. So please join us for that. It's going to be an awesome time and it's a really great way for the youth to share kind of what's on their minds and their hearts and what's in their world right now. And so please come down and join us for that. It's going to be really great. Um, and some awesome treats by our bakers. <laughs> Finally, I want to, um, you might have heard an announcement that Marge Saunders has died, and she's a beloved here and for many years. Her service will be on Monday, May 15th at 1 o'clock, and this Thursday, Johanna Duclos service at 11, this 11.30 this Thursday, and finally, Jay Truax's service on May 20th. So it's kind of a big moment in our life here with some of our elders um, passing or some of our elders dying. Bill Fuller, we saw celebrated his service on last Friday. I will say that we have a couple of people, who, number of people who help with the with the receptions for those funerals. Even if you can't do it for the long term, if you're willing to step forward to help us host these funerals, um, please be in touch. We would be grateful for that. All right, here we go. Please stand as you are able for the dismissal. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.